All right, so we got the speaker you probably heard from him recently. So Kurt Schwartz, our speaker today, his topic is miles and miles of Texas Hill Country in Big Ben. He's a former president of the, the Bird Club, former conservation chair of MOS for how many years? 18. Uh, 18. 18 years. He was conservation chair for us for... Uh, I forget what the number is there. That's got to be somewhere like 21. A couple decades. Uh, so if there's issues uh, in conservation, they're in his nature. The thing is, the fact of the matter is, even though he's not holding those chairs, you, you can see he's still working these issues and he's still showing up places to advocate for birds. I just want to talk a few of my personal uh, observations because when I first got in the club, <clears throat> and in addition to bumping into Howard and uh, David out in the woods, I came across this Kurt guy. And if he had a really good bird somewhere, he would make sure he would get you on it. I remember specifically remember a, a Lincoln Sparrow out at uh, West Friendship Park one day. I, I spent, I don't, know, I don't know, hour and a half about ready to leave, and then Kurt showed up and put me on the bird. He's, he just he embodies the club ethic. He helps out other birders. He, he gives uh, does walks with us. He do, does counts. He's an area leader. Uh, just amazing all this stuff. He's not going to get a coin today because he got a oh, coin go. a long time ago already. He uh, qualifies. Uh, the world over. He's leading another trip to Blackwater this weekend. Um, we had a somebody came out and grouped me one day for Kate Plow. She's got a two and a half year old daughter and she wants to be a birder. So she took mom's binoculars from and wasn't going to give them back. <laughs> so Kate said, What do I do when I group me? Can I use the discussion? And I said, Heck yeah. So she sent him a note and said, Can anybody help me out with some young kids' binoculars? Uh, Charlotte now has young kids' binoculars, and Kate now has her binoculars back. <laughs> so that was Kurt. Um, the worthy charitable cause, you're going to find uh, Kurt uh, behind it. There is an honorarium for this. Kurt's donating back to the Habitat Fund. So uh, that's Kurt. He's going to talk to us about his trip to Texas in April 2023, visiting the hill country in Big Bend. See several bird species only found there, golden cheek and Kalima warblers. Black cap vireos and probably a whole bunch more. Kurt. Uh, forward back pointer. Yes. Do you want to use the handheld or do you want to use this? This will this will be fine. Okay. And you're free to walk about. Yes. Where yeah. Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to do this talk in interpretive dance. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all very much. Uh, yes, as uh, uh, Greg said, this was a trip I took last April uh, and uh, to a region uh, in Texas where these three, this is the only place to see the, those three species. Uh, it was uh, 18 to 28th April, 2023. The tour operator was Victor Emanuel Tours. Our leaders were Barry Zimmer and uh, Brad McKinney. Uh, Barry Zimmer is a longtime uh, guide with, uh, with 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 Victor Emanuel. Uh, he said he was probably going to stop leading this trip this this trip and uh, was grooming Brad to uh, perhaps take over for him. Uh, I got a total of 200, 220 species, uh, six of which. Where are we getting feedback? Just do most. Uh, move away. Away from this. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, 220 <laughs> species, six or you know ones that I'd never seen before. There was an additional one for my U.S. list, the uh, the what is it, the, the common blackhawk, uh, and a total of 66 new species to my Texas list. Uh, the trip started in San Antonio. Uh, from there, we went to a little town in the hill country called Concan. We visited Uvalde, Del Rio on the Rio Grande River, across the Pecos River. Big Band National Park, Davis Mountains, uh, and uh, El Paso. Okay, there is San Antonio. We flew into there. Yeah, you just go this way. There's Uvalde, Del Rio. Uh, Davis Mountains are up here. Big Bend is down here, and then up to El Paso. Uh, the town of Concan is not on this map. I'm not really sure where that is. Uh, the hill country is also known as the Edwards Plateau. It is a big upland region uh, coming off of the coastal plain of Texas. 
which is has has rivers and all that sort of through it, and that is the preferred habitat, uh, the only habitat essentially for the golden cheeked warbler, uh, and to a large extent the black cap vireo. The black cap vireo does range up into Oklahoma. Uh, both were on the endangered species list, but have done so well that they have come off the endangered species list. Uh, I got to the hotel and there was a few hours or whatever before I met up with a group. So I'm going to go out in the parking lot and see what's floating around. Well, there it is. Clay colored sparrow, state bird, first one. Good start. And then wandering around the parking lot, there's a white winged dove, a bullock soriel. Uh, once upon a time, if you went to uh, Texas, there is a town called San Marcos. And there was an amusement park called Aquarina Springs. And uh, it's just, I think, a little bit to the south of San Antonio, right on the edge of the plateau uh, where all the groundwater comes out. And so you had this big wet area. Aquarina Springs. Oops. Uh, that's me some 40 years ago. Uh, no, 30 years ago and about 50 pounds less, a little bit more hair. And my wife, Patsy. Uh, Aquarina Springs was home for Ralph the Swimming Pig, pig the finest in animal exploitation. They basically had a little piglet, and they had somebody out in the water with a bottle, milk bottle. And uh, the little pig would jump off. OK, enough of that. On to the birds. Uh, we uh, left San Antonio, and we're driving around various country roads, and we run into things like lark sparrows. Oops. And loggerhead shrikes. Uh, if you drive around Texas, you look up on the wires, and uh, the shrikes aren't hard to find. And one of our first stops was the Ovalde fish hatchery, where we saw things like western kingbirds, golden fronted woodpecker, kind of looks like a red belly, sort of, but it's a, a variation on the theme. Vermilion flycatcher, these are pretty abundant in Texas. Black-bellied whistling ducks, which we can get here in Howard County, as it turns out, right? <laughs> and Greater Kiskadee. Again, this is all Valdi fish hatchery. Uh, this is a black Phoebe. Uh, it acts kind of like, you know, the eastern Phoebe, but uh, is largely black with a white belly. And uh, we had a very accommodating uh, yellow crown night heron as well. And this is Bell's Vireo which is a, a widespread uh, uh, vireo for like the center of the country and all that sort of thing. And uh, the Inca dove. Uh, a Texas specialty is the olive sparrow. This one was a, a very cooperative one. It just sat there. I have lots of frames of this bird. And uh, a, a common woodpecker of the West, letterback woodpecker. And then we drove around various roads around Uvalde and Concan and stuff like that, and uh, you know, pull over one point and find a black-throated sparrow. And uh, we also visited the Frio Bat Cave. This is a cave that has lots and lots and lots of retail bats. Obviously, the sun was shining when we got there, and we enjoyed this painted bunting and a canyon wren. And here are the bats coming out. It was just a river that they would come come out of the cave here and then kind of circle over this way and just phew, off they went uh, to eat bazillions of bugs and stuff. And here was a great horned owl that was hanging around to snag an occasional bat for dinner. Okay, um, we spent several days, uh, you know, just driving around the vicinity of uh, Concan. Again, you know, just looking for any kind of birds that we could get roadside. And here we have the ash-throated flycatcher, uh, which is a common western bird, and now is on the Howard County list for those that saw the rock burn bird. <laughs> and then here's the golden-cheeked warbler. Again, it's only found in the Texas Hill Country, the Edwards Plateau. Uh, <laughs> It's got, you know, the the uh, excuse me, yellow face, black chin, black eye line, and uh, they uh, tended to sometimes uh, pose for you, like this one did. 
And this picture, I think, came out even better. And again, this is just on the side of the road in Texas. And then we went to a private ranch called Brushy Creek. They have blue-gray gnat catchers there as well. And look at the size of that nest. The folks that lived here were very nice, very accommodating, and we wandered all over. We had several black-capped vireos at the lodge in Concan. We had, I think, five on this ranch, but they're very skulking. I'll have a picture later. Under the carport of the farmhouse, cave swallows are nesting. This is the nest. That's the head of the bird. There's the eye, the beak. A bird of Texas, although occasionally they show up in Maryland. Cape May gets them just about annually, inexplicably. And then here is the black-capped vireo. It's a skulking bird. It can be pretty noisy, but it's a skulking bird, so getting a picture is challenging, and I managed to pull it off. And we saw several yellow-throated warblers. We get those here, of course. And Concan, Neal's Lodge, is apparently the furthest north now that the tropical parula has come in terms of breeding and everything. It's a breeding bird well up into the hill country now. It's like our northern parula, but lacks the dark mark that you would have here, and I forget what else. But this guy just posed up there and kept singing for us. It sounds just like a tropical parula, too. The zzzz sort of song. Here's another view of it. And it was a real surprise to see a red-breasted nuthatch. But apparently they get as far south as Texas. A bird of the southwest is the brown-crested flycatcher. This one was floating around behind our cabins. And I chased it for a while trying to get a good picture. And this was a really cool moth that was perched on the front door of one of our cabins. Wilson's Wood Nymph. We have one here in Maryland. I can't think of the name of it. Beautiful. Beautiful Wood Nymph, yeah. Which I've gotten in my backyard when I have a sheet and a blight and all that sort of stuff. Well, we were driving west. We had a road stop at one point and we got a road zone-tailed hawk. Uh, these you can you have to be careful. They fly very much like a turkey vulture with the inverted or with the V and tilting back and forth. So if you ever see a turkey vulture with white bands in the tail, <laughs> call me. Uh, this is the long-billed thrasher. This is a bird of Texas uh, and, uh, and 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 the West. It looks very much like a brown thrasher, but uh, a lot grayer up here in the head. And uh, while we were wandering around, we had this uh, cast and spar sparrow. This is one of the two uh, sparrows of the Southwest whose main field mark is there are no field marks. <laughs> but this is the Cassins, and it was very, very cooperative. Okay, this is the Uvalde's Town Square, and this was a memorial to the school children, 19 children, school children and two teachers senselessly gunned down on March the 24th, 2022. Uh, but this is not the school, this is the town square, but they, you know, done a little, oops, memorial and so forth. Okay, let's move off that cover. Uh, here's a queen butterfly. I don't remember where I took the picture, but uh, it's this colorful little butterfly of, of, of you know the southern southern states. And uh, this was in uh, Del Rio at the hotel. We pulled in, and there was this really funky moth just perched right there. But uh, I had had to kind of poke it to expose the the pink marks on the abdomen. 
uh, Del Rio again is right on on the Rio Grande, and uh, there we we got to see the uh, the belted king, or not belted, uh, ringed kingfisher, which is a Texas specialty. Uh, I don't know if they get that in Arizona or not, uh, but uh, definitely uh, in the Rio Grande. But again, we were we, well. This is on the Rio Grande Valley now. And uh, it's also one of the further north places for the clay-colored thrush, which is, which is a Mexican species that has moved into the U.S. has been breeding in the Rio Grande Valley now, apparently for some time, and now they're they're moving further north. Uh, another night, yellow crown night heron. Uh, crested caracara is a common bird in Texas, uh, but we didn't see too, too too many of them on this trip. This is the only photo I got, not a particularly good one. And uh, another black phoebe, but here we are looking at the back, as opposed to the one we saw before that had the white belly. And uh, I'm not sure how they figured it out, but this supposedly is a, um, a hybrid of the Mexican duck and a mallard. Uh, again, this was sitting on a pond in, in Del Rio. And then here we have a male hooded oriole. Uh, that's a nice bird of the southwest. And as we were coming out of uh, out of out of Del Rio, I guess it was, uh, we came across a, sudden, a flooded field that was just full of birds. That included uh, these uh, these Franklin gulls, Franklin's gull, uh, a big flock of yellow-headed uh, blackbirds. Baird sandpiper, which is something we see occasionally here in Howard. And as we continued west, we drove across the Pecos River, this is the valley. And uh, there was a roadside stop where we stopped for gas and, you know, potty stop and all that sort of thing. And there was a, a scissor tailed flycatcher just flitting around. It's the only picture I got. They're, they're pretty common in Texas. And we finally get to Big Bend. This is a stone structure called uh, Casa Grande. And right at the lodge, uh, the dining area, we had uh, a, a say speed bee that was, was flitting around and fairly easy to photograph. Uh, there's several trails around there. The first one we went on was the window trail where we had this uh, cactus wren. Uh, here's the uh, the trail. That's Brad there. Uh, Scott's Oriole was, uh, you could see that just, you go outside your room, stand on the deck. And uh, there was probably two or one or two flitting around, but uh, yeah, the roof is capped sparrow. Columbia vireo. This is part of uh, the species that was once known as solitary vireo. It's since been split into the blue-headed, which we get, the Columbia's cassins. That'll probably be changed sometime in the near future. Uh, this is the Columbia's. And here we have the cassins. These were like in the same bush. <laughs> and the dusky flycatcher. This is one of those Empidonax ones that uh, all look alike and all that sort of thing. And it's a dusky because that's what the guide said it was. <laughs> Uh, Texas, you get the black crested uh, titmouse. Looks like ours, acts like ours, just has a black crest. And then there's the Mexican jay. I got a lot of frames of this bird. <laughs> and then this is another songbird of the Southwest, the burden, yellowhead. Again, this is a you know window. Uh, whatever trail that was, Big Bend. And uh, here's another structure called Mule's Ears. Mule, mule Ears. And uh, Cottonwood Canyon, another area of Big Bend. It's a camping area and so forth. And uh, we had uh, Roadrunner running around there. Gray Hawk, another Southwest specialty. Black-tailed gnatcatcher. Uh, I guess uh, they have a black tail. And something of a black cap, which of course our blue gray doesn't have. And this is the Santa Elena, Santa Elena Gap uh, in the Rio Grande Valley. That's Mexico. This is the U.S. 
and sort of see the Milky Way. My camera is not real good at taking pictures, but I do the best I can. Okay, the big attraction at Big Bend is the Kalima Warbler. This is the only place in the United States to see this puppy. It involves going up the Pinnacles Trail. You can't see it on here, but you go, uh, 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 uh. The canon canonical walk is nine miles where you get to the top and go an additional mile to some place called Boot Springs. Uh, we were so exhausted by the time we got to the top, we just didn't do that. Had we been able to go, we might have actually gotten painted rain stars, uh, painted red star, for example, but uh, we were just beat. It's, uh, so we did an eight mile round trip, and this is a 2,000 foot elevation gain by, by switchback. You are beat by. <laughs> Some, people turn around. Some people turn around. Whoops. Maybe if I move over here. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the Rufus capped uh, sparrow. I think we actually had another one of those before, but uh, this, uh, again, we're going up the Pinnacles Trail. Uh, this is a structure called. I think there's one here. Too. Oh, there's one over here, too. Okay. This, this is called the window. It's a, you know, a gap in, in, in the, the mountain structures and everything else. And then here we have a canyon tohi, you know, common western bird. Uh, a pretty cactus. This is uh, a female broad-tailed hummingbird. Do you want to try a different mic? Okay, or, or, or are they interfering with one another? Oh, okay. Uh, this is a girl broad-tailed hummingbird. Of course, I didn't get a sexy male. So. <laughs> and this was the first clean war we had at about three and a half miles up. Uh, one guy got a killer shot. I wasn't that guy. <laughs> uh, it was very, very active, moving around a lot. And then here we have hermit, thr hermit thrush. It's all Acorn woodpecker, which oddly enough is on rocks. <laughs> what's, the oh, what's, the what's the elevation when you started out besides the 2,000 foot? I don't know off the top okay. of my head. It's uh, probably somewhere between three and 5,000. Oh, right. sea level, maybe. I could be wrong. Uh, further up, it's uh, about five miles. We finally actually had a Klima warbler that we could we could see pretty well. Uh, the lighting is not great, but uh, in any case, uh, I'm reasonably happy with this photo. And this was an interesting sign that was up there at the top. Uh, there was a little pit latrine, but uh, they wanted you to go out into the woods to do number one and use that only for number two. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the view from the top, you know, when we got to the top of the top of the cliff. On the way down, we had this Arizona sister butterfly. It's a pretty cool butterfly. Okay. Uh, I don't remember where Terralingo was. Who knows? But there was a nice summer tanager there. <laughs> it's just outside the park. It's like right on the, it's right on the northwest. Oh. Yeah. All right. Okay. North. Very good. So st uh, still in the Big Bend area. There we go. Okay. And uh, where was the Eurasian colored dove? I don't remember. There are a lot of them in Turtle. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot in Texas, period. Yeah. <laughs> Texas. Oops. Pushing the wrong button. Okay. Devil's Ranch Road, we're still, yeah, yeah, that was part of Big Bend, yeah, we're still in the greater Big Bend area. Uh, finally got my uh, uh, common, black, uh, common Black Hawk uh, in the United States. I've seen this in, in Mexico, but this was the first one I saw in the U.S. Uh, it was a pretty cooperative bird. Uh, coyote. I don't think he's carrying any dynamite. <laughs> Is he with the Roadrunner? <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, well, on two or two or two 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 occasions, I think we had we had javelinas uh, running around, and they were pretty unafraid. So apparently they're not under any hunting pressure. 
and uh, here again, this is a Rio Grande uh, Valley uh, Village, Rio Grande Village Nature Trail, ready ground of, common ground of, excuse me, not ready. Uh, very bunting. This was a very cooperative bird. This is a specialty of the Southwest. Uh, we had we had another pretty good look one at uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the window trail, uh, but this this one is I got better pictures. And uh, Panther Junction is another place where they have a ranger station and so forth, and they have you know running water and all that sort of thing. And uh, we had a curb built thrasher that was uh, jumping around in the garden there. And uh, Blue Creek Canyon, uh, we had uh, this uh, greater ear earless lizard. Yep, it's not a bird, but I mean, it's a pretty cool looking lizard. Uh, gray vireo, it's a west southwestern species. And then we went to the Christmas Mountain Oasis. There's a little old lady who lives there and she's put in feeder stations, water features, and all that sort of stuff. And you go down four miles of bad road to get there. But we had things like white crown sparrow. Uh, this is one of the, it may be the only place where consistently Lucifer hummingbird is being seen in the United States right now. It's, uh, you know, a southwest species, purple throat, Decurved bill, and uh, you used to be able to see it at the Ash Canyon Bed and Breakfast in, in in Sierra Vista in Arizona, but I don't know if that that, that still persists. But and uh, another shot of the uh, the male Lucifer, and uh, with the water and the feed and all that sort of stuff, uh, Baird Sparrow came in, another Western species. And then uh, here, just a nice shot of white-winged dove with National Fly Flycatcher Brothers. I don't know. <laughs> uh, another lark sparrow. And uh, a Cape May warbler was coming to one of the water features at the, the Christmas Mountain Oasis. And uh, there was a little group of scaled quails that would come in, and uh, you had to be very, 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 very still because you know any sudden movement, whoop, they disappear. And uh, a pine siskin of all things showed up. There were a couple of sightings of pine siskins two, three weeks ago, but I don't know that there's, uh, and I don't know if we had any Howard, but uh, western tanager. We just had one of those in Colombia. <laughs> Back in January, but not uh, not it didn't have the red head. And uh, a Wilson's warbler, and that's a bird we can see on migration here in Maryland. It's pretty widespread. And then the yellow roped warbler, which is very different out there because ours has a white throat. And uh, there are other differences up through here that uh, maybe. Dave could uh, elucidate, but uh, the most obvious thing is the yellow throat or a white throat. And uh, here we have Western wood peewee, pretty much looks like an Eastern wood peewee. And uh, then, okay, here's the uh, the myrtle yellow rumped warbler, as it were, with the white throat. <laughs> weird, uh, weird, weird sights along the road coming out from the Christmas Mountain Oasis. And uh, this was a uh, pretty funny uh, glamping. Note the the facilities. Step up. Uh, apparently, they were repurposed trailers. And uh, we drove through the town to the town of Fort Davis, where we had Chihuahua and ravens, and up to the Davis Mountain Preserve, Casson's Kingbird. This little white patch here at the chin is the key to Cassins and distinguishing it from, from Western and uh, uh, other of those, those, those yellow kingbirds. And uh, there's a white-breasted nuthatch buried in there. And then the hepatic tanager, which uh, is a Southeast uh, Arizona thing and apparently also uh, in, in Big Bend. This was a very cooperative bird. And uh, here, oh, Madeira, 
Madeira Canyon. Yeah, yeah, Madeira Canyon and Davis Mountain Preserve. The rock wren's up there singing on top of a bush tree, excuse me. This is Grace's warbler, western species we don't get here. We'd get very excited if we got here. And Townsend Solitaire. Violet green swallow, widespread western species. The black-headed grosbeak. We have a few records in Maryland for this one. And just some scenery in Davis Mountain Preserve. Here's the black chin sparrow. He's a little gray guy with a black chin around the eye, orange bill. It's about the size of a chipping sparrow, I think. And then an olive sided flycatcher, very nice. And then the gray flycatcher. Gray flycatcher, gray vireo. Get confused? Yes, I do. Uh, and uh, driving, driving around on the road, we had snakes basking out on the roadway. This is the gopher snake. And here we have the western diamond-backed rattlesnake. And we made our, our way uh, towards El Paso, and we stopped off at a wetland area, and uh, we got... Uh, Got uh, got got white-faced ibis uh, that had a glossy in amongst them. Hmm. That's you know our typical ibis. White-faced is more of a, a, word, a bird of the west. And uh, the Mexican duck, hmm. and we're a little bit to the east of El Paso. Uh, I don't know. It's just an amazing sign. <laughs> Wiener Schnitzel Hotel. Or maybe it's a restaurant with a hook motel attached. I don't know. And uh, in El Paso, we went to Escarate Park for uh, for this burrowing owl that was in a culvert. Uh, El Paso is a site for lots and lots and lots of uh, petrochemical industry. And there's sunset over the window. And uh, that's pretty much my pictures of Texas. But wait. <laughs> so I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Uh, microphone. Oh, you're going to make me think. Uh, <laughs> can you repeat the questions back? Oh, yeah. What were the six life species? Uh, well, Black cap vireo, the golden cheeked warbler, and uh, the Kalima warbler, uh, common poor will, uh, elf owl, and uh, I'm drawing a blank. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh. What shape is the lady at Christmas Mountain in these days? She looked reasonably spry. Okay. Uh, she seemed to be getting around. Uh, she's 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 not a youngster. Still managing water from place to place to place. I think so, but uh, she's she's getting a lot of help from her son, as I understood. Okay. But she seems to be going strong. Excellent. Who's still awake? <laughs> One week ahead. Uh, who's about a week in hand? So it looks so wonderful. Are you going to organize a trip for the club to go out there? No. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there are tour operators that will be happy to do it for you, and they'll do a better job than I do. Uh, Victor Emanuel Field Guides. They, uh, they, 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 they do, they do a good job. Okay. Well, call it a day. Okay, so thank you, Kurt. And so next month we're going to have uh, Bonnie Ott uh, with her presentation. Plus, as I mentioned, we're also going to have uh, Eddie Franceschi talk to us about the reservoir. That's the day before we get access back into the reservoir. Uh, we're getting back in from the uh, 15th of March to the 30th of November, you have to have the letter, but you also have to have an access permit. Uh, and that's out there. We had a great shoreward appearances last year. Not sure we're going to have 
as much a habitat, but there's some great waterborne territory. So any other questions? Don't, don't, don't forget the first county record. The first county record of a black-legged kitty wake that came in. We, it was, uh, then there was this guy named Zielkowski that showed up in the rain, in the dark, at the edge of Hurricane Ophelia and started seeing all kinds of birds come in and out all day in the rain and whatnot. Should have gotten out there. There's still same pipers, all kinds of stuff. So you don't know what you're going to find out there, but we now have this improved access. And uh, uh, I know there's great warbler territory in there. Uh, hooded warblers, Kentucky warblers, et cetera, I was finding. And so anyway, thanks for coming. Any other uh, questions or observations? If not, we'll see you next month. Thanks.